You know, one of the things constant during the pandemic has been an absolutely red-hot real estate market. Of course, people are getting tired of living in small apartments and condominiums and, and incredibly low interest rates. But lately, we've been seeing at least national signs of a slowdown. Roger Healy has been watching the and active in, in the real estate market in Dallas for two decades. He's the owner, the CEO of Rogers Healy Companies, and he joins us right now. It's good to have you with us. Thanks for having me. It's good to be here. So is it slowing down? Like I say, nationally, it we, we look at the uh, the housing starts and building permits for new construction, and, and the existing home sales seem to be leveling off. Um, so the short answer is yes, but it's not what one would think. It's slowing down because we don't have inventory. And the numbers are going to continue to drop probably for the next month or so, where historically this is the busiest time of year, but they're dropping because, you know, when there's no inventory, a seller who would historically be a buyer doesn't have a place to buy. So they were kind of at this standstill. And this is not like it was, you know, 10 or 12 years ago when people couldn't get approved for a loan or it was the great foreclosure crisis or whatever. This is just something that, you know, like every other situation we're going through is just unprecedented where there's just they can't build a house quick enough and you 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 can't even get a house to market without having multiple offers in all price points and and we're not seeing neighborhoods that are that are turning over again because that was that's what seemed to happen along for a a good long while the sort of gentrification or you know one generation would move out and another generation would come in and and redo homes and and take over a neighborhood Yeah. I mean, so that's always going to happen. But the other thing, too, that's just been interesting is that there is a a shortage of labor with construction workers. And there's also an all time high with construction costs. And, you know, the flippers and the remodelers and the people that are wanting to do that kind of stuff are kind of getting they've, they've kind of worked themselves out of a job. And a big trend that we're seeing happen that historically would just sound kind of weird is called multi-generational living where, you know, it's pretty self-explanatory. It's like, all right, I'm going to go essentially move in with my parents, but in order for it to make sense, I got to build an extra thousand square feet, make sure there's a place for me to sleep. And I have my own private, um, my own private space. But yeah, the, the, the trends are, are shifting dramatically and very, very quickly. Yeah, that's, I tell you where that's happening. It's happening in much older homes because it seems like all the homes that have been built, at least in Dallas, over the last 20 years are like zero, zero lot line. They build these mansions that take up every square inch of of, yeah, well, you know, of space. I'm sorry, please. Yeah, well, and again, a builder, a spec builder is going to build as much square footage as possible so they can have their price per square foot be as low as possible. And if you can fit 6,000 square feet on a, on a lot versus just 4,000, a builder's always going to go with 6,000. And, you know, a lot of times you might see like a second and a half story, which is just, you know, I'm six foot six and I can't, I can't really fit in a lot of these. It's like walking in an airplane uh, <laughs> on the third floor. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a different kind of creative right now. And the zero lot line community was originally geared towards uh, baby boomers. And, you know, there's so many people in that baby boomer generation that are retiring and want less maintenance and they still want the the lifestyle uh, amenities, et cetera, but they don't want to move, you know, outside their urban core. And now it's kind of just, it's anybody that can get their hands on it. You know, one of the things that we'd seen on, on the uptick here in the last year or so were home leases that people, right. corporations buying up homes and people taking out long-term leases just as they would you know, on an apartment, but in, instead having a, you know, a house in a backyard. Right. Is that it's, still picking up? Yeah. But again, it's like, it, it, again, it's just, I, hate, I, hate to keep saying, I hate to keep saying this, but it's just so bizarre that lease rates are also at an all time high and people normally would go lease a neighborhood they couldn't afford to buy. Now they're moving. That's, that's the gentrification that's happening. People are now leasing in areas that they've never even heard of <laughs> and they're getting, they're getting comfortable there. And there's, you know, new developments, new schools, et cetera, to where it's almost just like, Oh, well, screw it. We'll live here forever in a neighborhood or a city that we had not heard of until a year ago. And then a year later, that neighborhood is now, you know, it's, it's built out and it's the next it's the next layer of the bullseye. And that's gentrification. I mean, this is gentrification at its finest in 2021 when people didn't think you could really play SimCity anymore. It's moving rapidly. 
But every time I talk to a builder, the way they're getting around it is they're moving out. They're going further north. I mean, you know, Prosper and um, yeah. places I'd never heard of before, you know, that are yeah. approaching the Oklahoma border. Are Are you out there, too? I mean, have you, are your agents uh, selling houses that are out there? Yeah, we're everywhere. And, and the thing with builders, you know, again, Prosper, Frisco, McKinney, all the cities that are kind of an everyday conversation the reason they're building these in the next city. So whether it's like a Fairview or a Sunnydale or, you know, Gunter, like cities that are literally on the border of Oklahoma, it's because land prices have also gotten expensive. So when you're in a production builder, the production builder makes money off of um, economy of scale and they want to build as many as they can, as quick as they can and sell them as quick as they can. And their numbers don't make sense for building on a single lot. They need, you know, 40 plus acres to go build a community. And when, you know, either the numbers don't make sense or there's no opportunity, it's like, all right, where's the next city that we're going to literally change? And, and it's, it's, it's just, it's and, been crazy. And it's similar. We've seen that uh, in areas west of Fort Worth, north of Fort Worth. Uh, I see some new home builders going up into the northeast now. Um, northeast part of the of Dallas County, anyway, Mesquite and other areas. It's, it's everywhere. Yeah. I mean, there's no, there's no such thing as a, a less desirable pocket pocket of BFW anymore. Yeah. So tell me about your other business. You manage properties, right? You also manage commercial properties. Yeah, we do everything. So um, we've got a property management company here. We've got a global relocation company. We have a commercial division and a farm and ranch division. And so we're, we're seeing it from every angle and, the scaling that I'm having to do now is just hire staff to help with the influx of, you know, agents working here, which is great, but also managing the contracts. And it's just a lot. It's we, a whole lot. We don't, it seemed like we'd seen a moratorium on relocations and expansions for a while. I, my, my sense is that ought to be up. Are you getting uh, renewed interest in, in, in relocations? Yeah. And the, I mean, the commercial market, I mean, everyone's talking about Austin being the place to be. And I think it's number one for commercial and residential, but Dallas, I mean, Dallas is so much more affordable and we have companies. I mean, we were, we were on hold for probably three months last year and that wasn't because of Dallas. That was just because of the world. Right. And now there's companies still moving here and grows and the things that people don't really realize until they digest it is if like, if a Toyota moves here, obviously that's a fortune 50 or fortune 20 company with, it's a multi-billion dollar move, but Toyota is going to bring five or six other companies that just rely on Toyota. And that's what we've always focused on is, you know, it's kind of like Moneyball. Instead of going to, to play, to pay the all-star player, pay his backup that knows how to play like an all-star. And companies are doing that in Groves here, um, you know, just because it's Texas. No, no state income tax. It's central. And Dallas way more than Austin or DFW way more than Austin is affordable. You know, one of the uh, things we used to hear about were code names. That they would float code names and not identify the name of the corporation and explore housing and schools and locations and that sort of thing. You got any code names out there? Uh, no, I wish. I want to call my, I've always wanted to have like a cool name like Hollywood or Maverick, but no, only, <laughs> what, no, no, no time for code names. So no properties that are, that are looking for, for relocations with code names. No, not, so, not yet. So have you got your people back under the roof again, or, or is everybody, are all your agents still working from home it's, and detached? It's hybrid. We, um, ironically, or coincidentally, a year ago today is when I shut the office down, and we were shut from March 11th until October 5th. And um, – open it back up on uh yeah in october we opened it back up but social distancing we've got covid waivers every which way from sunday hand sanitizing stations um or we partnered with barry um formerly very dust to put everything together for us and it's worked out uh it's worked out really really well yeah uh jordan mccann from very has been on the show he's really had a land office business with everybody adjusting so. oh yeah for sure. I would think it's going. Well, look, we wish you the best because, I, you know, if if you're doing well, the economy's doing well. You're one of the best reflections we've had. You've been in this business for 20 years, and and oftentimes these boom times end badly. Is is the end at all in sight? No, you know, and I, and I get it. And I, I started my company in 06, and then two years later I was like, what the hell just happened? Um, and so I've lived through it already, and – the difference between now and 
you know, the times that we've had adjustments in the economy is that we have the influx of people moving here. And I hate to say this, but even if the world drops out everywhere else, like Dallas still has four to 500 people moving here a day. And those people need a place to live. A lot of them need a place to work and some of them need a, they want a place to go on the weekend. So we've got job security. Um, I do think it's weird that we had the weirdest, the, the worst year in the history of our country that also was coupled with the best economic year. That doesn't make sense to me when people couldn't find a job or couldn't work and you have five to 700,000 people a week filing unemployment, yet everything is great. That's weird to me. Um, but I think that's also going to go add more security to real estate Yeah. where people will want tangible investments. They have more control over and, you know, cloud investing is, is not sustainable. I think you've just defined the K-shaped recovery. And <laughs> it, it, yeah. it is it's exactly what's going on. Rogers Healy is the owner and the CEO of Dallas Base, the Rogers Healy Companies. Good to have you with us. Thanks for having me. Have a great day. Y'all stay safe. Thanks a lot for more of our conversation with Mr. Healy. Go to krld.com slash CEO. I'm David Johnson, News Radio 1080 KRLD.